How am I supposed to lay down? <laughs> Look at this. Here, she's going to make room. No, she's taking more room so I can't get in the bed. <laughs> She's like, pipe down, mommy. And then the you cat is in the back going, what is with this? I'm only supposed to be in the bed. Nobody else. <laughs> Tabitha, are you going to let me in? It's not looking good. Oh, there we go. Oh, now she's going to tell the cat, like, no. There we go. Except for she's afraid of the cat. <gasps> good morning. Good morning. I... Just made a major screw up 30 minutes before keto on the couch. I don't want you to be hard on my husband. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time Rachel overcooks the eggs, you'll be alerted to it. Joe made a major screw up. I was trying to import something on my computer and I overwrote the entire Keto on the Couch template for today with all the comments. Yeah. And Keto on the Couch is in 30 minutes. So okay. I have to quickly go back and find all the Facebook comments all over again, but it's good. It's a busy day today. Yeah, it, it is, is day 10 of Beef Butter Bacon and Egg 2.0. Feeling good. Me too. But uh, Chris and Miriam are coming in town tomorrow. I'm so excited. So uh, we got a busy week because we're going to be going to Universal Studios with them. Yeah. And, and next week is Low Carb Boca. So yeah what's on your agenda i need to clean this house because they may need to use the restroom <laughs> just in case so breakfast this morning cup of coffee with some butter in it always good and uh two eggs one slice of maria emmerich's bread uh toasted now i saw somebody on facebook had made a comment like does anybody toast it here's what we do we put just a little bit of butter on each side and we stick it on the blackstone and it absorbs all it's the like butter. It's like Texas toast. And it's delicious. Very buttery because this bread can stand up to whatever you put on it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have asked what our studio looks like now that we're mostly done. There's a couple of little things to do like that front window, but I figured I'd give you a tour of everything that we've gotten done. So this is the back side of where we do all the filming and the live streaming and everything. But this is our front room. So there's our front bay window. There's our front door. And then here is the main wall. Now, all of these walls used to be tongue and groove wood. We pulled all the wood down and then we resheet rocked. After we painted, we hung up these sound panels and these sound panels are two inches thick. And then some of them are four feet wide and some of them are two feet wide and they're filled with like a batting and that helps to absorb all the echo since we don't have the wood, which we learned after we did all this that wood absorbs echo. So we hung those on this main wall. We're thinking about eventually hanging like a giant TV there in the middle. I just don't know yet. That would be more for like a competence monitor to read comments, but I don't know if we're gonna do that yet. Then we came over here and this doorway used to only be 28 inches wide. So we widened the doorway and then we added this barn door and that allows us to close off the room, help with sound if the kids are like in the kitchen or something like that also to keep the animals out when we're filming. And we continued these sound panels all the way down here around the back. And then you have our back wall here, which is actually painted a gray. It's a different color gray, it's a darker gray. But what happens is when you turn on the lights, uh, it takes all the light and it basically turns the wall into that color. So you can see now that I put the lights back on, they're reflecting that color up. And so basically that dark gray absorbs all that color. Now we actually need one more sound panel that's gonna go right there. But the one that was supposed to be there is up in the front because again, originally we were going to uh, put a TV up there. So this is our bay window and you can see how it used to kind of cut in. And I'm waiting for someone uh, to come and actually install a piece of stone there. He already came and templated it. 
It's gonna find a piece of remnant. We're gonna put one big piece of stone there for the bay window, and then I'm gonna cut a hole into the front wall that I've added there, and that's gonna be storage for cables and things like that. And this is where we do all of the filming and everything. And you can see, it's basically a big giant bar table we found, like it was in a scratch and dent store. And so we've got that there. It keeps us up nice and high. It came with these benches. One bench is here and one bench is in the kitchen. And then over here is where we do everything. So this is called an ATEM and it allows us to have up to eight different camera angles. So we only have a couple of camera angles, but then we also use it to be able to select things like extra screens, casting and stuff like that. So if you look over here, that's what allows me to see everything that's going on. And I can see it large. So sometimes you'll hear us say like, let me make that large so I can read it. I can press a button and that's exactly what you guys are seeing. And then I can change the screen. So like there's one window, there's another window, and then there's another window. And then if I had other cameras on right now, you would see all the different camera angles. But that allows me to control everything. So there's like a piece up here that tells us if you guys are hearing the sound, like right now the sound is off, but if I hit the microphone on, now you can see, you can hear everything. Over there on the top corner, that tells me if I'm live streaming and what the data rate is and if we're starting to lose everything. The next one down tells me if we're recording something and then you can see the other cameras if we were to have other cameras. And again, I can have up to eight different camera angles. Then up here is where we read all the comments from. It's basically another screen off of our computer. This controls all of the sound and everything. There's our main camera. It's a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. And then we have the main monitor for the computer. This here is called the Stream Deck and it allows me to do things quickly like go live if i press that go live button it goes through a whole bunch of functions like play a video turn off the microphone wait one minute doing all those kind of things this allows me to turn off all the lights at one time so it allows me to do a lot of different things like record the video so i can hit one button and it does a whole bunch of different functions and that's kind of what this does this is kind of like the hub and it also does all our streaming and then there's the computer, one of the cameras, and there's the microphone. So like I said, most of it is done. A couple of little things that we need to do, like the front piece, but overall, we're really, really happy with it. Everything looks a lot cleaner. The only thing I am gonna be doing is I'm selling these two big TVs. They're kind of bulky and they serve a great purpose, but it's just a lot here and I have to have everything on a tripod. So we're gonna get two more of these other monitors and put them over on the other side and be able to clamp them on. So if you come over to the other side here, you can see these two TVs are mounted on a giant tripod and I'd like to eliminate that tripod. So if we can get rid of that tripod, it'll clean up the more room more and then we can just get another clamp stand on this side for the other two monitors. And then these finally, you can see the back of the two lights. Now that upper light, that one normally turns off. That's never on, I added it. Just so if I'm working in here and I need to do things, I can have some light. So all I have to do is say, Alexa, turn off studio light. And that is pretty much right there, what you would see when you're doing all the filming. So everything that you guys see, you're seeing it from this angle. Aw, they're so cute and lovey. But this is usually the calm before the storm. They're going to have one lick too much, and then Roscoe's going to bite her, for sure. <laughs> Here it goes. Ooh, the mosquitoes are out tonight. Ah, uh, it's dinner Ooh. time. Tabitha and I went for a really long walk, but once the sun went down, the mosquitoes came out. <laughs> uh, so we had a couple of eggs and coffee this morning. Keto on the couch went really well. I'm so excited that Keto really on the couch went well. Really thankful that we weren't having like terrible sound and freezing and all now, that. Now, so long as once we were able to get everything refixed that I deleted by accident, with yeah. the exception of one person's story where I think I mm. in haste like screwed up the story. I think I, I didn't finish editing that one. I thought those all went through, but that's okay. We got it all fixed. 
Uh, so dinner is really simple. Yesterday, um, when I came home from church, I made a whole bunch of keto chili. So <laughs> I, I basically that. used our keto chow chili recipe, but no vegetables, no garlic, super simple, sim super, super simple. I just did like the ground beef, the pork, some cumin, some chili powder, and then the keto chow chili along with some beef bone broth. You mean keto chow tomato basil? The tomato basil, yeah. I don't know why I call it chili because that's what I use it for. Um, but what I did was I did four pounds of beef and three pounds of pork. So I just wanted to have enough to go through the whole week and just have it this way. It's like a go-to thing. It freezes really well if you need to freeze it and you can't get to it. But it's great as a meal. It's great on top of burgers. Also, I actually had made all the bacon and then I was in the middle of, as I always am, doing like 50 things. And I turned the cast iron up a little bit too high and I burnt the bacon. Don't burn the bacon. And so, yeah, well, I was upset because it was like a pound of bacon. And like, so it was unusable and I didn't feel like making more bacon. So we just made it without bacon. And actually, I really love it. It's amazing that not having the bacon in it really changes the flavor. Well, it changes the texture too, because yeah. now you don't have little chunks of bacon in there. You know what it reminds me of more? It's like hot dog chili. If you've ever had hot yeah. dog chili where it's almost more minced than normal. And it's also how much you break up the ground beef. A lot of times I leave big, giant chunks in there. I kind of like it like and, this. And uh, this one, I kept chopping it up and chopping it up, especially when you're cooking seven pounds of meat combined. Yeah. So we have two burgers. Each burger is about a third of a pound. And then on top of that, we've got the chili. And then on top of that, we've got an egg. So pretty much all the food groups are represented here. I'm really excited. I can't wait to try this because I... I mean, it's basically meat on top of meat. Meat on meat on meat. Ooh, and these burgers came out perfect. It's like absolutely a perfect, perfect, like medium rare. Yep. Because mm. you don't, you definitely don't want to overcook hamburgers if you're going to drizzle hot chili on it, because then it's going right. to keep cooking it. Yeah. So I talked to Chris. Mm -hmm. We got our plans all set up for you know everything. They're coming in late tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, and then Wednesday morning, we're going to get up at like five o'clock in the morning. Yay. Pick them up. They're early up to risers Universal too. Studios. So. Yeah, but they're on vacation. I know. But it, it is a, almost a three hour drive to get to Universal Studios. Are they ever on vacation? I feel like they're, they're always working so hard. Yeah. They're like us. Even when you're on vacation, you're still sort of working. Right. Stuff, so. so we're going to finish eating and then, uh, is this going to be a two day vlog? So we'll do Monday and then Tuesday. And uh, yeah, we'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Let me see, let me see. They're back. Ooh, I, I like got those. Them done. Oh, wait, you got your toes done too. Let me go see the toes. Ooh, they match. I like those. I'm sticking my feet way outside of my flip flops because when I got into the car, I rarely ever get my toes done because extra money. But. I needed to do something with my heels. They were so gnarly looking and I think I want to wear flip flops more. So I needed to get my pedicure done. And when I got into the car, I booped them. I booped my, my pinky toe and one of my other toes getting in the car. And I thought to myself, all right, don't cause any trouble. Just get in the car. And so what? One of them's all jacked up. And I thought, no, I just paid for this. I'm going to go in. I will apologize profusely, but I do want it to look sweet. So I went back in and the lady was super, super nice. I did go back to my original place. They do such a, job. a great job. Totally worth the money, I think. And she was very accommodating. And I promised her that I would force my big hoof through the flip-flop and make sure that I didn't bump it again. This day is out of order. We are horrible daily vloggers. We are backwards on our whole day. I left the house so early this morning that we didn't even do coffee. So it is 5.30 in the evening and I, I want coffee because I was told there is a coffee experience in each new day. You're right. So uh, it is Tuesday and uh, we just got off of the phone with a coaching call. Yay! Such an awesome experience. It was awesome. If you're interested in any kind of coaching, absolutely not mandatory because I think we do a tremendous amount of coaching 
for free for on all our videos yeah. and answer emails as much as we can. But if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one thing, there is a link down below it was super fun. for our website. And uh, it's just, it, today's Tuesday. Tuesdays are, are the busy days because yeah. uh, got up early, early morning prayer. Rachel had staff meeting. Anthony and I had to cut. And we're trying to get everything done because Chris and Miriam are here. And of course, I fit in the most important thing of the day. And that was somehow finding an hour to get my nails did. Here's the thing though. It's been over a month. You know what I noticed? What? When I really want to get something in, I find a way. That's right. I make it happen. I'm strong like that. Isn't it that way with keto though? We, we talk about it all the time. It's like, we say, what's your why? But also like, how much do you want it? Yeah. People talk about like, well, I don't know if I can afford it. How much do you want it? Are you willing to give up going to the movies so that you can have better quality food? Are you willing to maybe deal with somebody going, I can't believe you're eating so much bacon. How much do you want it? Well, it's interesting. I think that keto clicked for me because at first, I, I mean, I'm on keto 2.0. We've talked about that in the past. I started keto. Beef, butter, bacon, and egg 2.0 and keto 2.0. Right. But like our entire keto journey, like I had a previous journey. Like mm -hmm. I tried, but was not all in. And at that time, my excuse mountain was larger than my wanted mountain. Right. And so I stuck to my excuses and tried to make, like get the same results doing wrong things. I don't know why I thought that would work. I, I feel like I'm an intelligent woman and I know that if I've been doing it wrong for 40 plus years, that maybe we need to change it all together. Not, I'm gonna get better at managing chaos. I'm gonna be right. really good starting right now. So, um, but once my excuses were no longer as big as my need for me to get serious, I got serious and here we are. Yeah. Just realize you're coming up on your four year ketoversary. Yes, I am. Right? I End am. of January. Because what started you with keto, yes. I have been doing keto for 10 months. It's true. And we're talking about 2.0 because... A little bit after I started, Rachel tried it for about a month and like, yep, doesn't work. Went back to her eating 500 calories a day, gained more weight. And then that year you were, for your January fast, you were not eating. Right. You were eating her. Here's what her meals were. One slim fast a day and one of those big containers of coconut, coconut water. water. That's all she had for the whole month. And about halfway through the month, I said to her, I want you to try keto again. And she was like, why? And I'm like, because you're already in ketosis. And he tested and my I ketones. And her ketones were like a five. Even though she was eating Slim Fast and coconut well, water. I was in starvation mode. But yeah, that's what my point is, is that you were in a starvation mode that you were eating so few calories, your body was having to convert your stored body fat to ketones. And that's what you were surviving on. That's what the ketogenic lifestyle and diet is. And so you said to me at the end, you said, fine, at the end of the month, I will do keto so long as you cook everything that I eat. And four years later, I am still cooking everything that you eat. Best deal I ever made. <laughs> that was a, that was wisdom right there, right? Because I could have been like, okay, if you like get me a top deal, but like, isn't it so much smarter to be like, cook all the food? That's the deal. You didn't think I was gonna be teaching you how to cook so that we can make recipes that are so easy even Rachel can make it, did you? No, but I'm excited because there's another Rachel out there. Right. I am not the only person that's like Rachel. There's somebody else out there that has a mountain of excuses who does not know or like or can cook and they need a friend. Like I needed community. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much I needed community, but I did. Yeah, right. so uh, food today, the only thing I have had all day is one of those meat sticks from Costco. <laughs> That's what I ate today. I had a meat stick. It was the Tillamook Zero Sugar Meat Stick, the beef guy from CVS, because I was completely out of hairspray and I had a coupon. But something happened at CVS. I went to the self-checkout. I should have taped it, but I was already so embarrassed that it was happening. I was actually on the phone with our daughter. And she goes, my gracious, how loud is that checkout thing? The scanner was like, boop. Like you could hear it in another building. Oh, wow. And then the, the, the 
computer cashier starts talking to me, asking me questions like Alexa, but only on like a- just started her. Oh, sorry. Stop listening. <laughs> um, so loud, huge conversation. Like, are you done? Press finish and pay. I was so mortified. I, it was just so stinking loud. So, but I did get out of there and I had a, a, a meat stick before I got my nails done. I had stopped at the gas station with Anthony and uh, he was filling up his big cup with water, which I have not figured out why he's going to Wawa to get plain water because he's doing no soda for the whole month. He when was we hurting. have a Berkey right there that gives you cleaner water, but he says that one is colder. I feel like he I don't needs a treat. That. So I think he needs there's to There's no have, charge for the water. He needs that interaction. But while we were in there, I'm like, you know, I really would like some pork rinds. And I don't know why I didn't grab a bag of pork and good. We have like 30 of them. Right. And I'm like, I really want a bag of pork rinds. And it was good because they don't have those ones that I had the other day. And they're not like the super cleanest. So uh -huh. I shouldn't be eating them on beef, butter, bacon, and egg right? anyway. But it was just like, oh, oh, they got rid of them. Great. There's one temptation I don't have to worry about anymore. Well, I got to tell you, again, it happened to me. I thought, well, maybe I just got a bad Dollar Tree. So I had to pick up crafts. And this was on Sunday. I needed to stop by the store. And I looked and I thought... Maybe it was just a fluke that the last time I, I looked at plain pork rinds at Dollar Tree, it had sugar in it. Wow. Not even like bad oil. I mean, it did. It had canola oil, but it also had sugar. So I thought, I just got a bad Dollar Tree. I looked again. Yes, again. No, so I, here I am wanting a different result from the same behavior. So I didn't eat it because we're no sweeteners of any kind and certainly not sugar ever, but... I thought that was wild in a pork rind. Yeah. Start packing the pork and good. So, uh, yeah. So the only thing I had was that. You had your meat stick. I was going to eat earlier, and then we had a coaching call. And now in about 15 minutes, we have Bronson! the monthly call with Bronson. I'm so excited. For all of our supporters on YouTube and on Patreon. So I'm excited about that. And then as soon as that's over, we're going to head on over to see Chris and Miriam because they landed about an hour ago. Should we crash gonna, their live stream we're gonna tonight? We're going to crash their live stream. We're going to have some dinner with them. And then uh, I believe we're getting up super early in the morning. Like Farmer time? Five o'clock. Well, we're supposed to pick them up between five and 5.30 because it's a two oh. and a half to three hour okay. drive. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to get up early in the morning. We're going to head off to Universal Studios. We may or may not vlog it. We're going to see how the day goes. I'm sure we'll do something. It was super rainy today. Yeah. I'm bringing over some raincoats with us because the people from Utah are not used to rain every day. the moisture. She probably is already trying to figure out like what I think every morning, which is what am I going to do with this hair now? Because <laughs> like the hair situation is like you can fix it in South Florida however you want to fix it. But outside, the humidity decides what your hairstyle is going to yeah, be. Yeah, our winter humidity isn't as bad as the summer, but it's still nothing. Our winter humidity is worse than anything they ever have in Utah. I'm sure they're thinking, like, how is it rainy but still not cold at all? I know. So, yeah, we're going to head on over there after the Bronson thing to have some food. So, we'll check in with you guys when we get over to Chris and Miriam. Okay, I have a bread for you to try. What's in it? I'm not telling like sardines you. Sardines or Go something? Go ahead and try it. There's liver in it. No, just kidding. Is it weird or is it like a sweetness to it? I used vanilla keto chow. There is a No really, sweeteners added. There is a really nice sweetness to this. How many scoops for the loaf? One scoop for the entire loaf. And then after it was done at 30 minutes, I turned off the timer and I brushed the top with just a touch of melted butter. Mm. So usually what we're using is chicken. Chicken. Keto so this is kind of like making it a Swedish Sweet flavor. I need some lipstick. Here you go. Let's ruin your lipstick. Uh-oh. We got a weird request. You don't get this request from somebody who's visiting you very often. Yeah. Can you bring your grill and also some butter mayonnaise? Off to the races. So Chris sends me a text message. Hey, we got steaks. They have a tiny little frying pan, but I wouldn't be upset if you brought your electric Blackstone. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to transport, and I'm also planning on taking it next week when we go to the RV show. <laughs> There's a train in our car. Are you ready? I am so ready. Are you excited? I hope it's operating for just a, just a second so I can grab all of the raincoats that I've brought over here. And the Blackstone. And the butter mayo. It's raining. 
always right you want to show your state off in the absolute oh best light but florida is like no i'll do what i want there we go oh look it's chris yeah hugging in the rain welcome to rainy <laughs> south florida yeah we heard it was rainy here man Gracious. If you don't like it, just wait 20 minutes. It'll be completely different. What's wrong, baby? I finally, like, gave in to the sleep on the way home. I did not realize, like, how tired I was. But, like, once you just sit in the chair and, like, the car is moving, my eyes closed for a minute and... It's like a baby, right? It's dangerous. When the boys were little, like, when you wanted them to take a nap if they were crying... Take a cranky, ride. You just took them on a drive. Yep. Well, it's been a long day. I mean, got up at, what, 4.30 in the morning. It has been a long day. I well, mean, good. We filled I it I think we lots. just shouldn't go to bed. So we went over to Chris and Miriam's and um, in typical Joe and Rachel fashion, we forgot to turn on a camera to show you what we were eating. And in typical Joe and Rachel fashion, there was a lot of meat consumed. So I actually had two, yes, count them, two steaks. I had... Probably two hamburgers, I want to say, because he cooked them nice and rare like I like them. And then um, probably four pieces of bacon. Wow. Yeah. I didn't eat that much. I had a nice big New York strip. He had New York strips and ribeyes. Ribeye. Now, the New York strips were thicker and bigger than the ribeyes, so it's probably the equivalent of two of your ribeyes. Well, thanks. Yeah, because they were small. Yeah, but I'm a New York strip guy. Let us know down in the comment. Are you a New York strip or are you a ribeye? It's okay to like New York strips. No. It is really it, is. Is it? No. Then I had a burger... And a lot of bacon. Lost count of the bacon. I just kept grabbing two, three, four slices. I Went was, back for it a couple of times. I was really glad that they like asked us, hey, you got some butter mayo? Because then we made some butter mayo. And it we have not made we haven't had any this butter time around. mayo since 2.0 of BBB and E. Yeah, in the middle of the Bronson coaching thing, I get a thing. He's like, I wouldn't be sad if you brought some butter mayo. And then I was like, and I was, wouldn't be sad either. I grabbed this right here, the AeroDisc container for the Vitamix. And in the middle of the Bronson thing, I melted the butter. Couple of seconds later, we had a whole bunch of it, and now we have some in our refrigerator. We brought a bunch over there. Zero to mayo in and five minutes. Yeah, so, and I did it. Um, I gotta put that on our website, but I did four sticks of butter to uh, four egg yolks, and then um, the mustard and the lemon juice and the red mint. So good. It was so good. I did add in, I think it was a little bit creamier. I added in a quarter of a teaspoon of the Terra gum. I do think that it helps to kind of like, I don't know, the consistency of yeah. it. Yeah. I'm hoping that it may be, one of the issues that we had with the butter mayo is if you get it too mayo-y when you first make it, does that make sense? Like yeah. really, really thick. If you get it really, really thick when you make it, when you go to stick it in the refrigerator, it becomes really hard butter. Yeah, it does. But if you kind of made it not as thick as mayo, but not as thin as a hollandaise sauce. Mid mayo? Like in that middle, it didn't get as hard in the refrigerator, and I'm hoping the tarragum would help with that. So we'll see. With I've got shot. some in the refrigerator right now. And then we did uh, their live stream. We, we busted it on their live stream. Thanks so much for letting us. There was Be some on good that conversations. Live stream, Chris and Miriam. Right? We talked about questions that I think that we get and that they get, and questions that I think that people in general want to know. Like, if you could only buy one appliance, what should it be? I am non scale really victories. Thankful that we get to share Universal Studios with them. I've always wanted to kind of like double date an amusement park, but we've never been really healthy enough. Right. To be able to do an amusement park with another couple and not feel super self-conscious. Like, it's hard to, to do it when, when you're like, I'm going to have to do this in a wheelchair. Right. Like, because I can't walk. Like, I think it's been... And, and like, I don't really want to go on rides if it's like, hey, um, I need the belt extender and so does Joe. So we've got to have special seats and we're going to have to be in line. And... You know, they're your friends and they love you no matter what. It's on it's on my end. It was always on my end that I, I felt self-conscious about stuff. But I think about all of the times that I pushed away opportunities even to hang out with friends because of how I felt about myself 
free keto. Well, that's something we were talking about on the live stream. If you didn't see that live stream, go check it out because I think there's some good information and I'll leave a link for it up here. Uh, but one of the things that I had said is that pre-keto, if we would have been friends with them, now we became friends with them through keto. Yeah. But pre-keto, if we would have been friends and they came in here, there is no way I would have gone to Universal Studios with them for the reasons that you just talked about with the seat belts, the extenders and everything else. But also, I didn't want to go to Universal Studios or Disney World with anybody other than my family because I was embarrassed that I needed a scooter. I can't tell you how many times people would look at me and be like, you're awfully young. And it wasn't that, I, I mean, was I fat? Yes, but I wasn't 500 pounds like fat. People would look at me and be like, you could be walking. You're using that wheelchair yeah, as, an as an excuse to get on rides early. But it was literally that I could not walk. I couldn't walk. If we did go on a day and I didn't have the wheelchair, and we tried because we, tried. we didn't want to spend the money because it's like, you know, 50, 60 bucks to rent those motorized scooters. Um, we would, I would get halfway through the day and be like, I can't do anymore. Many times getting to one to the other side of the park and I could barely make it back. And we tried to cheap out with like, the regular wheelchairs, but then That's I'm making lot. my wife and my children at the time, young children, like 12 year old John Paul, you've got to push your 300 pound father around a, around a park. Well, and I was also very embarrassed of how like chafed I would get. And I would always have such trem tremendous like blisters and like heat rash. Anytime I pushed myself to walk. At yeah. all. It was always like that. And so it was. It was like, it was very hard to open up and share that. And I know like the kids would have enjoyed it if we had like vacationed with other families. But it's like we pushed that opportunity away because we weren't ready to get serious right. about our health. And I'm really, really thankful that we haven't missed out on a whole lifetime of friendship opportunities. And I don't want to miss any opportunity moving forward. Yeah. Well, it is 11.15. Just about time to wake up. We have to get up in four four hours. We can four do it. Four and a half hours. And because maybe, we have a three hour drive. Well, and earlier because you need to make some purse bacon for the road. Oh, yeah. We need to be. So we do have Chris and Miriam coming over here because we can jump right on the turnpike from where we live. Also selfishly so that we can sleep an extra half hour. Is, is that bad to say? <laughs> By the time this comes out, Accurate. like it'll it'll have happened, right? So I think they can appreciate that. So yeah, so we're gonna end the vlog here because we gotta get up in a couple of hours. Good night. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Well, whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time I can barely keep my eyes open, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.